Balake, where is Balake at? My name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. Welcome back, everybody. A.A. Ron is here for some more SPTV. Today we are talking about one of the most notorious Scientologists on the internet, certainly one of the internet's biggest fake billionaires. I'm still surprised how many people don't know that Grant Cardone is uh, one of the biggest recruiters and financiers of the human trafficking cult known as Scientology. Um, it's remarkable because even in his own little sphere of influence, he's not shy about promoting Scientology. He'll even do some of his 10x growth seminars at Scientology properties, specifically geared towards Scientologists. Every now and then in some interviews that he does, he'll mention Scientology. Even in some of his own events, like like when I say interviews that he does, when he appears on other people's channels, um, sometimes he'll mention Scientology. Uh, and, and in his own events from stage, sometimes he'll mention Scientology. And yet still a lot of people don't really know that he is a Scientologist, that he's an OT8. That's the highest level of Scientology that you can do, um, that he's donated tens of millions of dollars to Scientology. And, uh, and that's the only reason I talk about him on this channel. This channel is called Growing Up in Scientology. It's not called Growing Up in Frauds or Growing Up as Con Men or Growing Up as a Fake Billionaire or uh, Growing Up as a Fake Real Estate Guru. I only talk about the guy because he's a Scientologist and because my channel is dedicated to exposing Scientology fraud and abuse. And Grant Cardone is one of the biggest enablers of that cult and the fraud and the abuse. Now, um, Grant Cardone recently had a civil lawsuit against him uh, thrown out by the courts. It had already been thrown out before, and then there was an appeal, and a higher court reinstated the lawsuit, and then it was thrown out again. And Grant has uh, basically been dumping on all of the media outlets that reported on this lawsuit during the three years that the lawsuit was in the courts. So he posted a video to his channel this week um, with a phone call he recorded between him and someone who worked at, at a magazine works at a magazine called I think The Real Deal. It's a magazine dedicated to real estate issues. And he is just <laughs> raking this guy over the coals for what Grant feels is unfair coverage that he's received over the last few years from this publication. Let me share you the part where Grant Cardone mentions Scientology. Let me go, let me know in the live chat, you guys just verify for a minute that the audio on this is okay once I hit play. Here we go. Now, let me ask you the last question I have for you, and then maybe you have some questions. Do you think people in this country should be able to practice religion without their beliefs being condemned, judged, or prejudiced? Yeah, of course. Okay, so why do you guys, you, you and others, include my religion in these articles? If I was a Mormon, a Jew, a Catholic, a Protestant, you wouldn't even cover it. I'm a Scientologist. You wouldn't cover it. Why? I mean, obviously, because the Scientology church has had, you know, its fair share of controversy. Okay. Well, what what church? Uh, how about the Catholic Church? Has it had some controversy? Yeah, well, we have, I mean, yeah, how about have, how about the Israelis that are at war right now? Have they had some controversy? Yeah. How about Muslims? Have they had controversy? True. How about Muslim uh, Mormons? Why do you? bring my church and why do you guys think it's okay to bring one church but not all churches into it okay you got a fair point there did you guys see that jump cut watch this again okay to bring one church but not all churches into it okay you got a fair point there whoa that is an incredibly a troublingly timed jump cut that is obviously not how that conversation went i'm going to play it one more time thank you bring one church do you bring my church and why do you guys think it's okay to bring one church but not all churches into it okay you got a fair point there wow okay so let me make a really quick point here um scientology one of the biggest scams that scientology engages in is hosting putting on participating in these interfaith initiatives where Scientology tries to cozy up to get buddy, buddy with become allies with religious leaders in the community, representatives of other faiths, what one might call real religions. Um, now as a former Scientologist, I, I should, meaning I'm going to speak from my viewpoint when I was a Scientologist. Okay. As a Scientologist, I always knew that was pure scam and pure manipulation. I knew that. 
because I knew that as Scientologists, we very much looked down on and ridiculed any members of organized religion. You have to understand that Scientology calls itself a religion, and in the sense that they do truly believe in an immortal spiritual soul, there is an argument to be had whether their beliefs, um, although you know the totality of Scientology is a con and a fraud, and I've documented that many times, and I'll keep documenting it. The fact is, something that Scientologists do truly believe in is the immortal spiritual soul. So that someone might argue there's a religious aspect to that, but they don't actually call, think of themselves as a religion in the normal sense of a religion. Someone's trying to call me. I could have sworn. Yeah, I'm on Do Not Disturb. Okay, my point being, that even though Scientology in the courts and in the press calls itself a religion and acts like it's, you know, really thinks it's a real religion, we very much looked down on people who believed in religion. Because as Scientologists, we believed, we convinced ourselves that Scientology doesn't require you to believe anything, that Scientology is purely evidence based, that there is no faith in Scientology. There is no belief. I mean, Scientology does not believe in a in a God or a heaven or a hell or anything like that. So I know that as a Scientologist, I convinced myself there was no faith or belief involved. And therefore, we looked down on people who had faith, who were part of these religious groups that required you to have faith and just believe the Bible or believe the Quran or, or believe whatever. You guys get the point. So I always knew that these interfaith things were a total sham. Now, the reason Scientology does them these interfaith things, is to trick religious people in, in this country into thinking that they need to protect Scientology as they would protect one of their own. Scientology is not trying to convert these other religious people into Scientologists for the most part. All they're trying to do is create a friendly ally situation so that when Scientology comes under attack, either in the press or in the courts or from the government or the IRS or what have you, that religious leaders from the real religions will go, whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got to step up and defend Scientology because they're one of us. If we let them come for Scientology, maybe they'll come for us next. Scientology is trying to get themselves under the umbrella of protection, that umbrella being held up by the world's real major religions. So what I found interesting in this quote from Grant Cardone right here, I'm going to replay it real quick just so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, check this out. Thank you. Have they had controversy? Sure. How about Muslim, uh, Mormons? Why do you bring my church and why do you guys think it's okay to bring one church but not all churches into it? There, right there. Now, what I found so hypocritical about what he's saying, he's not even saying it's not okay to talk about religions. He's almost going, how come you're talking about us? But you're not talking about all those other guys. It's almost like he's doing the reverse protection, okay? Instead of other people coming to Scientology's defense and saying, hey, that's not okay, don't talk about Scientology, Grant's actually going, if you're going to talk about us, why don't you talk about him? Why don't you talk about him? Why don't you talk about him? I thought he sort of slipped a little bit and showed his hand. He wasn't even saying you shouldn't talk about any of us. He was saying it's so unfair that you're picking on me. Did you hear what these guys did? You should talk about that as well. Did you hear what these guys did? Oh, the, those guys hurt many more people than us. You should be talking about all of us or none of us. Do you see how Grant doesn't have the backs of other religions? He's just using them as a shield. Anyway, it might seem like I'm really belaboring this point, but to me, I notice things like that because I know how Scientologists think. And I know that Scientologists use this thing as a bludgeon against those who criticize Scientology. But you're not talking about the Middle East conflict. How dare you mention us? But if you talked about all of us, it would be okay. I wouldn't have a problem if you were talking about me as long as you were talking about Joe and Mary and Sally and Sue. Why just me? Okay, there's a few other tidbits in this interview. Uh, Grant really backed this reporter into a corner. Um, you know, uh, uh, I felt a little bad for this reporter. He didn't seem to do a really good job holding his ground, if I'm being perfectly honest. Sorry, Francisco, but it's just true. Um, let me, there's just a few quick highlights here. 7.06, let me jump there. Let's go. Do you think, just your personal opinion, do you think I'm unethical? 
Yes, Grant, I want to answer that question for you. I absolutely think you are unethical. You are a con man. You are a fraudster. You specialize in confidence tricks. You are a schemer. You are a scammer. And I believe you will likely end up in prison shortly along with your brother in the next few years. Uh, Francisco was a little hesitant to say anything quite as definitive uh, as that, but I just wanted you to know from me to you. Yes, I do believe that you are unethical for the record. Okay. Let's jump forward to 749. Bear with me. All right. That's good enough. Here we go. Aye. Here we go. I haven't gotten there yet. You know, do you think, do you think I'm involved in a get rich quick scheme? Yes, Grant. I do think you're involved in a get rich quick scheme. I do, especially a get rich quick for you scheme. Um, I think almost all of your lines of business are designed to sell the dream. That dream being if only people will take your little course, they can become a fake billionaire like you as well. Your entire origin story is a lie. Your story on how you got started in the business is a lie. Even your story on how you got started in Scientology is a lie. The story of your personal wealth is a lie. Um, your entire persona is in fact based upon a variety of get rich quick schemes. Francisco did a little bit of a better job of telling you somewhat of what he thought about you with respect to that, but I wanted to make sure there was no question about it. Um, every part of you is essentially a get rich quick scheme. Okay, let's jump forward to 1014. Here we go. Now you stated the complaint in the complaint that I overpromise and misled. Are you guys going to do an article now that says the courts found that there was no overpromise, there was no misleading, there was all right, fine. Um, so yes, Grant, um, the courts did not find that you didn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, Grant acts like there was some sort of a trial and he was found not guilty, or as some might misstate, found innocent. You were not found innocent of anything. Okay. <laughs> Lawsuits are extremely fickle in nature. Uh, court decisions and appellate courts decisions are extremely fickle in nature. It does not make a shred of a difference that this particular lawsuit did not succeed. You are absolute someone, absolutely someone who over promises and misleads. Almost every pitch or advertisement you make for literally any one of your lines of business is something that overpromises and misleads. If anything, the court has just determined uh, unilaterally that overpromising and misleading is simply not a violation of the law within the context and the framework that they were analyzing it. And uh, I think that's pretty clear to your average Joe who can look at the entire spectrum of business and pitches and schemes and frauds and see that to a certain extent, it's simply not illegal to overpromise and mislead. You, sir, however, do absolutely overpromise and mislead, and no journalist should ever feel the need to retract a story that calls you out on your bullshit. Uh, let's see, last one here, 1043. Oh, this is the juiciest one, you guys. This is the absolute juiciest one. Okay, Ted, ah, that's the wrong one. Okay, 1043. I guess we'll settle for 1042. Here we go. How do you like like how do you got how do you make sense of the damage it does to somebody's reputation though? And I, and I'm sincerely asking you, Francisco. Like, how do you like this lives on the internet? The big the big headlines live there forever. It creates doubt in the public's mind about my personal ethics, about my reputation, about my business. It damages my my kids see it. My my twelve year old sees. Grant Cardone uh, headlines. Like, how do you got? How do you guys like make that right in your minds? Whoo, guys! There is nothing juicier, and richer, and more hypocritical than Scientologist Grant Cardone 
crying to a journalist that someone wrote mean things about him on the internet that Grant Cardone feels are untrue and it's not fair to him and his family and his kids and his reputation. Grant Cardone, have you ever seen the websites that Scientology creates on the former members who speak out publicly about Scientology fraud and abuse? I direct your attention, Senor Cardone, to the website aaronsmithlevin.com. And at the bottom of that website, it says, all rights reserved, copyrighted Church of Scientology International. Uh, Scientology created a hate website littered with uh, the, mo the craziest lies about me. Um, that website went live the very night my episode of uh, my episode aired uh, on, on Leah Remini, Scientology in the Aftermath show. It's not just me. Look at the websites they've created about Leah Remini, Mike Rinder, every single, guys, I mean every single, every single former Scientologist who appeared on any episode of the three seasons of Leah Remini, Scientology in the Aftermath, has a dedicated website in their name with the most salacious lies interviews with former with former um associates and family members just reading from a scientology script saying the most ridiculous lies grant cardone is one of the biggest funders of this organization he's one of the biggest recruiters of this organization he happens to be an actual con man an actual fraudster and he has the audacity to be crying on the phone to francisco alvarado about how do you make it right in your head that my daughter will see the mean things you wrote about me on the internet i i just as soon as i heard him say that i knew we were doing a video folks as soon as i heard him say that i was like you done messed up grant cardone um Guys, you guys want to talk about fraudsters? Let's talk a, 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 a little YouTube business here. Let me show you a little something. This is Grant Cardone's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I'm getting ready to go. Let me and pause enjoy. this. It, you see, he has 2.47 million subscribers. Now, maybe this isn't obvious to everyone who just watches YouTube. I can tell you it's extremely obvious to me from someone who understands the back end of the YouTube business. It is quite literally impossible to have that many natural organic subscribers and to be uploading videos that get, let me show you, 4,000 views in two days. Guys, I, I have probably 10% of the subscribers that Grant Cardone has. I have never uploaded a video in the last year that only had 4,000 subscribers, uh, 4,000 views in two days. Now, of course, the video that we're watching right now has 130,000 views over the last two days. Okay, that's more what you would expect from a channel this size. But look, guys, 3,000 views, 6,000 views, 4,000 views, 7,000 views, 9,000 views. Why am I talking about this? Grant Cardone's own YouTube channel is a fraud. That is what analytics look like when you have purchased the vast majority of your subscribers from some sort of an Indonesian click farm. Everything about Grant Cardone is a fraud. You're a fraud, Grant. So for some reason, may, maybe someone like Francisco at the real deal after your lawsuit got thrown out feels like maybe he's putting himself in a legally tenuous position to stick it, stick to his guns and call you a fraud, unethical, deceitful. But but I'm telling you, that's that's who I see you as. That's who I know you to be. OK, and I just didn't want there to be any confusion about it. Didn't want you to think anything had changed. I know you did a whole video about the clickbaiters and the, I've never clickbaited a video about you in my life. Every video that I do with your ugly face on the thumbnail and your name in the title, I discuss exactly what it is I say I'm going to discuss. So um, uh, yeah, that's all, that's, that's all I wanted to say about this, guys. It's been a while since I've done a Grant Cardone video and uh, you know, th th this one was needed. Um, okay, let's see. A few super chats. Blake Reed, ugh his face. Aaron, did you know he wormed one of his ads on your channel? Yes, yes, yes. Because I've done Grant Cardone videos, there are a lot of Grant Cardone videos before 
before my video. So thank you, Grant, for being one of the top sponsors of SPTV. David Miscavige and Zenu, thank you. Uh, if Miscavige was smart, he would label him an SP like he would anyone else. One of these days, I believe Grant Cardone will be labeled an SP. We'll see. Okay, so Sarah, billionaire, but he couldn't afford a decent editor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you see the uh, uh, Matt's caustic comments? Did you see the Jada Pinkett Smith Levin meme I posted? Matt, I did see the meme that you emailed me. I did not realize it said Jada P. Smith Levin. Now it makes a lot more sense. Um, thank you for that. Ken's channel. This video has one downvote already. Grant. <laughs> Uh, okay. This has been fun guys. We're having fun. It's a Thursday. It's my favorite day of the week. It's trash day. You know, I got the trash out on time last night. Trash came early. The day started outright. If you know what I'm saying. Um, let's see guys. I actually have a whole bunch more coming this evening. I'm doing something with my lawyer friend, Zach, I think at about seven, um, uh, I'm doing more fun little, uh, quiz game tonight with, uh, with Reese at around eight. So stay tuned. Eventually, if I do too many videos in a day, YouTube will stop sending out notifications. So just check back every now and then and see what's going on. All right, everyone. Thank you for hanging out with me this evening. Thank you, as always, to everybody who watches until the very end. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, kick right on this guitar. And if you want to see a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!